Thank you for choosing CTN. And now it's time with Herman and Sharon. Hello. I love you. Thank you so much for joining us. I was just taking a sip of water. Okay? Yes. We this is water. Sharon. Hello, everybody. She's been with me for 90 years. <laughs> yeah, just kidding, folks. But, Feels uh, like it. <laughs> yeah, no, no. Isn't it. Isn't it great to know that no matter how we change, the Word of God is the same yesterday, That's right. today, forever. Everything changes. It's, it is amazing. Mm -hmm. The politics that we were used to when we were first married, 1959, mm -hmm. That's right. totally different today. But isn't it amazing that the older you get, the more you feel like, I'm getting closer to heaven. That's right. Closer to home. Yes, we were listening to the song, gospel song this morning, yes. early this morning, mm -hmm. uh, and and uh, he was talking about, I want to see Jesus, mm -hmm. and he, even though That's all right. of the all of the apostles and and whatever you know, and he named all of them, he says, and then he finished by naming all of them, and then he says, but I want to see Jesus, mm -hmm. and that was his uh, ending theme. Today we have two personal friends that have been a part of our life for my goodness I know long long time <laughs> and the one we haven't seen him in a long yeah, time and his dear wife she was in the green room and I'm looking at it because yeah. her name was not on my format and and she looked so beautiful and I go you are coming home with him and he goes <laughs> he goes talk her into it <laughs> so so I have two people with me but the one guy who is the author and uh, a world-known name, Gene Edwards, uh, he has written a new book, Stories I Love to Tell. There it is on the screen. Mm -hmm. And you have to have this copy. It is one of few books that when you start reading it, you continue reading it. Does it make you smile? <laughs> yeah. It, but I, <laughs> no, it, 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 just, it just reminds you who we serve. Amen. The person of the Lord Jesus Christ. But let me introduce to you the famous, the well-known, <laughs> an author, uh, unprecedented. Wow. Because his, his your first book, Gene Edwards, what was the name of it? Uh, well, actually, the first book I wrote was called Here's How to Win Souls. Okay. And it uh -huh. became a bestseller. I was 24. The one you're referring to. That's the one I interviewed you about. Okay. A Tale of Three Kings. Yes. Tale of Three Kings, and you folks that oh, are watching. that's the one, it's yeah, very famous. Yeah, the, the people are watching right now say, that's the guy that yeah. wrote that? <laughs> this is the guy that wrote and that, right there. this is his wife, Helen. His beautiful his wife, wife, Helen. Yeah. We have a story later on in this segment that is unbelievable, how you guys got together. Oh, I gotta hear that. Yes. I mean, it, it's, it's in the book. It's in the book. And, and, and I'm not kidding you, I started reading it, and I'm going, and as I'm reading, because it, it isn't dawning on me that I'm reading about him. <laughs> and as I'm reading, I'm so caught up in the story that we'll tell you later, uh, I'm going, oh my goodness, this is unbelievable. And then I go back to the beginning of the chapter and I'm going, it's Gene Edwards. <laughs> <laughs> and so, I mean, it's just, it, it's, it's a story that, that is unbelievable, but they told it, so I'm believing it. <laughs> but uh, this is Gene Editor. He is one of America's most beloved Christian authors. Uh, he is considered uh, the Paul Harvey of Christian writers. <laughs> and he has published more than 25 best-selling books. Wow. His signature work, The Divine Romance, has been called a masterpiece of Christian literature. Gene is a part of the house church movement. He travels mm -hmm. extensively to aid Christians as they begin meeting in homes rather than in church buildings. Boy, oh, oh my goodness. Uh, he also conducts conferences on living the deeper Christian life. What an honor to have you. What an honor to have you. Thank you, and I have something I want to say in the beginning. Okay. I have been interviewed with just about everybody that ever interviews Christians. I have more respect for this man, Herman Bailey, 
than any other man I've ever had the privilege of working with wow. on television or radio. Wow. Yes. Wow. That's <laughs> a long time. Coming from him? Yeah. It's like Ronald Reagan saying, you're a great politician. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I'm telling you just exactly how I feel. Uh, well, it's, it, it is an honor to have you. It really is, and the book is worth your time. Uh, it is a beautiful book to take. If, you, if you're flying, take on the airplane. By the time you land, you will walk off the plane with a smile from ear to ear and realize <laughs> that God can use you. Mm -hmm. That's the whole idea of it. Let's start out with Chester. Uh, <clears throat> in fact, it's, it's interesting. I wanted to make this note. You dedicated the book to your physician, Dr. Gabriel? Grable. Grable? Grable, uh-huh. I've, I've never seen that because, because you know, I, I, I like to read the dedications and the names and the people that recommend it or whatever. Why did you do that? Well, because I consider him the best physician in America. Wow. He is a MD and he is, he's in Jacksonville, Florida. And I'd say he knows at least 10 times more than the average typical physician in America, and I probably owe him my life several wow. times. Wow. And when you get up this old, you owe it to somebody, and I owe it to Dr. Grable. Oh, yes. that's sweet. Chapter one, <laughs> poor white trash. Where did that term come from? The word poor white trash goes back to the Civil War of white people who lived on the same level as slaves. Then it survived the Civil War after the freedom of the slaves. It still meant the same thing, basically. The most poverty-stricken people in all of America. And this is the story of, I personally, Abraham Lincoln can't touch it. He was in a, born in a log cabin. I have never heard a story of anyone so poor. Gladys Edwards. And she fought her way out of, she did not live in a dugout or a, uh, a log cabin. She lived in a storm cellar until she was 17 years old. Oh and pick cotton That's a right. dollar a day. A dollar a day. And she was a brilliant, if not possibly a genius. Uh, she fought her way out of that poverty. You say in the book how she got her education, she'd be picking cotton because her father required that One we've dollar. got to make that dollar. Uh -huh. So, so we, in our mind we're going, well that isn't a whole lot of cotton. It's cotton, folks. It's got to <laughs> weigh a certain amount or you don't get the dollar. So her father required that, so she would do that and then go to school. She'd go to school any where she could find a school, she would go there. And it says that she would, the school wasn't open sometimes, so she would be sleeping on the steps right. until they opened the school. That's correct. And uh, she died an authority a Texas as a teacher. She was the living authority on teaching dyslexic kids. That's kids who can't spell mm. and they can't ever do mathematics, even if their IQ is off the chart. In fact, they said that about her son. The, 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 and, and she required that they give him a test because everybody's saying he's too dumb to even learn. That's right. Give him an IQ test, please. Uh -huh. And they did, and what happened? Well, that's a secret. Uh, <laughs> she never let her son know what his IQ was. But I will tell you this, it shocked Austin, Texas. That's all we can say about it. It was that high? Oh boy, it was very high. And they thought, it, they thought he was too dumb to learn. Wow, yeah. that's amazing. Yeah, take, feel sorry for the dyslexic. <laughs> I, I have right. among those people who I've heard of uh, one of the most dyslexic cases of a man who could not learn math and his father forced him to it. His name was, let's see, Einstein, I think it came across. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? <laughs> it is. 
to force him into a field he was not interested in and then to have the imagination that that man did have. Einstein actually made the statement, it's more important to have a good imagination than it is to have a good education. That's really That's interesting. pretty amazing. That's why I've, I've existed this long. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Dumb as a doornail. The I last, got an imagination to kill you. <laughs> the last time I ever was with you, you, you made a statement that every time I did something well, it was an accident. <laughs> Boy, he remembers everything he said. <laughs> He's brilliant, so, so he would understand. <laughs> Helen, married to a guy like this, huh. what goes through your mind? I mean, it's like, people he ask, is amazing. People ask me sometimes, what is, what is it like to live with exactly. Gina? People who know him know what he's like. Yeah. <laughs> ask, what is it like to live with Gene Edwards? And I said, well, I just learned to keep up. <laughs> <laughs> do, That's do, what you got to do. Do you ever feel intimidated? I'm not given to intimidation. That's true. <laughs> yeah. But what is uh, I am very respectful. And your nationality is what? Well, I'm a mixture, but I do have quite a, quite a bit of American Indian. Cherokee. And a lot of, a lot of English. Um, I'm essentially English, yeah. really, in my makeup. Wow. But. She is an extremely <laughs> strong-willed woman. Mm. And right here, uh, right we right have here. nothing in common. you got to be kidding me. <laughs> nothing. <laughs> and we adore one another from the time yeah. we get up in the morning till we go to bed at night. Oh, How I long have you been I consider her the most beautiful woman in the world. Next and month will be 64 years. Oh, so my So you were goodness. married in 59. Yeah. We were married in 54. Wow. That's wonderful. Yeah, you, know, you know, you guys are going to make it. Yeah. I think so. <laughs> yeah. We wouldn't dare <laughs> give up now. <laughs> no, no, it's true. Isn't it, Absolutely. Isn't it amazing how many people, after a year, they go, you know, I was married a year and I realized it wasn't going to work. And, I'm, and whenever I hear these stories, I go, you're serious. Are you serious? No. Yeah. But, but because... Back in our day, and your day too, yeah. divorce was not an option. Mm. It was whispered. Yes. That's right. Mm. And uh, words that are thrown about here today, I didn't even know they existed uh -huh. when I was young. And divorce was whispered. The word cancer was almost never used. Yeah. Nobody knew what it was. Yeah. Yeah. And it was sort of, you just didn't use that word. Yeah. You'd rather die of it than to admit that you had had did, it. Did you know back in the 50s, any preachers in the pulpit that were divorced? No, not a one. They had to leave the ministry yeah. if they were divorced. Isn't that interesting? It was considered leprosy. If young people will go through the rough spots, just go through it, mm -hmm. you know, then things will work out gradually. But when you come to a rough spot and you give up, you know, yeah. then it's over. <laughs> yeah. That's a, a cross right in the middle of every marriage and you'll make it. Wow. Say that again. A cross right in the middle of your marriage, you'll make it every time. That's right. My goodness. You, That's a cross with two people on it. Both of them. Really? You say, now, I'm just touching on chapters. You have to get the book to get the full story, okay? So this will just kind of whet your appetite. Get but, the book from Amazon. Yes, The Day I Met Helen Keller. Oh, boy. Yeah, there are 26 books in there that will, uh, stories. stories that will just knock you off. They will. Mm -hmm. you, you can't stop it. You can't stop reading it. That book was actually written to transform people who read it more than all. Uh, most, well, Jesus Christ was the great storyteller. Yes. Here's Almighty God. He comes to earth. He's not a scientist. He's a storyteller. Yeah. He's not a scholar. Yeah. And most of what he had to say to us was a story. And Helen Keller is, I actually met Helen Keller at one of the highest moments of her life. I also, it was one of the highlights of my life. I had been living in the Holy Lands. I was 19. 
And it was uh, my second year in the seminary. In fact, I'm the youngest person to ever enroll in the seminary I went to. And uh, I had been living in the Holy Lands and I was about to leave and I decided to go to what's called the Garden Tomb. It was about 6 a.m. I'd be catching a boat that same day. And uh, there was someone there I was amazed. It was a week after Easter, the year 1951. And I recognized the woman's words, and they were American. And uh, she took the place of Ann Sullivan. And I, but I had n no knowledge of this. The other speech, monotone, like nothing I've ever heard. And when she stepped out of the tomb, at that instant. This is Helen Keller. Yes, the sun came over and there stood Helen Keller in tears, oh. her hands raised up to heaven, praising the Lord. I could not understand her words. And the glow on her face was one of the most rapturous things I had ever seen in my life. Wow. And she was crying. I stepped forward. I recognized her immediately. And she kept saying something. And she was crying and she was joyful. She was smiling and she was literally a glow. And uh, I wanted to know what she was saying. She was spaying over and over and over. So I got close to her and I heard that monitor voice. There is no darkness here. Wow. As she stepped out of the tomb. Mm. She had never heard a sound. She had never seen anything. By the way, she wrote some of the most beautiful poetry I've ever read in my life. Now, for and people I, that are looking, they don't have any idea who Helen Keller is. Give a little uh, Helen synopsis. Keller was called the greatest woman of the 18th and 19th century. She was born a few weeks after that and was had no eyesight and she was taken out of this dark chamber by a woman who herself had very poor eyesight and very poor hearing. Her name was Ann Sullivan and um, her father, uh, Miss uh, Keller's father, when she could read and write said to the pastor, Come lead my daughter to Jesus Christ. Wow. And it took. And her testimony of Christ was that fast. And she made a statement. I know the scripture is inspired because it's the only thing I've ever read that inspires me. Now that's witness from a dark jungle we know nothing about. She was taking a world tour at that time for people who were blind and who were deaf. She died two years after I met her. Wow. I left there wondering why there is no darkness here. And then I remembered all the other famous churches are dark, windowless, mildewed, and smell. But the garden tomb in in that country, in, in that, that area, in, in Jerusalem, mm -hmm. yes. And uh, the garden tomb is not like that. It is a beautiful garden, and then this tomb that may or may not be the Lord's. And she was mm -hmm. basking in the glory of the light. Mm -hmm. What amazed in me! In her praising to the Lord, go ahead. She communicated by writing on the hand, right? That is the only way she knew anything. They would, they would write out uh -huh. words right. and her, her sensitivity yeah. was such that every word she knew. And she could read Braille, right? Yeah. Oh, yes, she even knew my name. I don't know how that was oh, happened. Good, but, really? Uh, she understood that. And, uh, you know, she wished me well in the ministry. And I, <laughs> I listen. Isn't I that amazing? I still can hardly believe that moment of my <laughs> life. If you don't know who she is, you've got to get the information. 
It, it's Just amazing. Google it, Herman. It, yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> now you can take your iPhone and, and Google Helen Keller, and you can get the whole yeah what was the, the whole name list of, that movie? of exactly what happened to her. The Miracle Worker was the name of the movie, yeah, one of right. the greatest movies ever that's made. Right. Who, who paid? I think Patty Duke. Patty Duke. Patty Duke. Yes. Good, honey. Thank you. Who won an Academy Award? Yes. Mm -hmm. For it, uh, it still disturbs the, because I met that woman. Wow. It's still, I, I don't like to watch The Miracle Worker anymore. I get too torn. I know, uh, I know. Anyway, so that's hard. one of the unbelievable stories. The, the, he's got throughout. I'm, I'm going to jump through these because, because okay. we've got about eight minutes left, believe oh it or not. Can you believe? I mean, buy the book. It's one when, of the when, best when, things when you'll you, ever read you as long as you live. <laughs> when you used to come here, we had an hour. For 16 yeah. years, I had one-hour program, yeah. so 30 minutes has been condensed. Oh my. But but I, I, I want to get to this one, uh, which is Chapter Four. Uh, thank God, you got off the phone. Huh. I mean, the miracle. Mm. And again, if you don't think God performs miracles, mm. you talk about uh, the only son choking. Now they were in a place where there are no hospitals for miles, 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 and he's choking. And he had just preached a series of messages on God answers prayer. <laughs> Tell that story. Well, and quickly. he uh, quickly <laughs> yeah. uh, he I, stopped I to pray, knowing his child only had a, less than a minute to live, and he thanked the Lord for the time he had him. And he hung up the phone, and the phone rang and said, "Thank God you got off the phone." <laughs> We have the name of a doctor who's visiting in your village, and he felt, well, I can't get there. Yeah. He wrote down the address, and it was next door. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> and he grabbed his child, and he said one word, and I think it's, oh, I can't remember it now. And the doctor grabbed Trachea. his bag. Yeah. He had to get yeah, well, that's a tricky word anyway. Yeah, it is. And, uh, <laughs> And, and live. Tricky on that. That's, tricky. A, that's a beautiful story. Oh, it, it's, oh. it's incredible. Yeah. It really mm -hmm. is. There's another one in there, and I'm going to yes. do it real condensed. Do it. The, ch the, the couple who got married on television on a weekly program called Bride and Groom, Monday through Friday. Yes. yes. Uh, it's the story is unbelievable. There was no chance <laughs> anybody was going to watch anything yeah. except the uh, story. The, do you remember the McCarthy I, McCarthy hearings? Yes, yes. Three channels. That's yeah. all there that, was. It was, it was nobody had seen anything but yeah. McCarthy. NBC decided to take that McCarthy off, and that couple had the largest viewing audience of that program, Bride and Groom, and on history, NBC. On NBC. In, in Rockefeller Center. Yeah. In Rockefeller Center, Studio B. Okay, and and they said they said, and the couple, by the way. The the bride wanted a traditional wedding, okay. <laughs> the groom wanted to stand in front of a minister privately and take the vows. Compromise came <laughs> was that finally, when they appeared on it was called Bride and Groom on NBC, seen by millions of people. It was on ABC, NBC, CBS, all of them. And the McCarthy hearings took over all of the networks, but the people in Texas said what? We want that Texas couple to be seen in Texas. Move that off the air. And what did they do? They decided to move the entire NBC McCarthy hearings off. It gave the largest morning show program ever on one channel. And uh, the man who performed their wedding was at that time one of the best known men in the world, next to the Pope and Billy yeah. Graham. And there's the bride. <laughs> it, it, that, there's the bride that wanted a traditional wedding. There's the guy that just oh. wanted to be in a private, you know, <laughs> minister giving the vows. And they then were on the largest viewed wedding. And, Probably in American history. And you preempted McCarthy hearings. Um, exactly. We, and that absolutely. was 64 years ago. Next wow. month. Now, now, how did now, you... I want to know who married you. Dr. Frank Laubach at that time was the best known humanitarian on the earth. He mm -hmm. was also yes. a great Christian mystic. 
but he was actually world famous in 250 nations, all of them but the United States. And he was known here and revered. And he performed one of the most unbelievable <laughs> weddings you could ever imagine. And th th the applicants for this on-air wedding, they sent their application. I was wondering how you, how you they, got and, there. And they, they, they had 100 applications a day to look at during this time. The so they tell you why they picked you? The application was really? just uh, the story of your love affair. Yeah. And if they thought it was interesting, they scheduled you. Yeah. And that's the way it happened. So yours must have been really interesting. Yeah. Well, we had a conflict. I was going to be a minister. She was going to be a missionary. Mm -hmm. And we reconciled because I felt my ministry would go overseas. We got turned down by the mission board so we started looking somewhere else. And I think I am now in 250 nations. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> and, I how, and your, and your book, your book how, many, how many languages? There are 99 languages on the Tale of Three Kings alone, but all the other books are over 100 different languages. And when wow. you count it all up, it just, it gets pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. And I have spoken in 40 nations. And you met in college? Uh, we met in... More or less. Yeah, I was, yes, I was still in college. She had just finished. Okay. She's all the brains. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Very into Both of you just... Yeah. What, what else? We've got so... Somebody said you must have an interesting life. It, it, like yours, Herman, it's unbelievable. <laughs> Very you can few explain people it. Have, We've lived a few different lives. Yes, yes, yes. 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 A lot of Truth. different lives. That's right. I have never seen nor heard in all the books I've ever written, including A Tale of Three Kings and The Divine Romance, which are classics. Mm -hmm. uh, and I mean, there are classics. They never go out of print. They never stop in yeah. their sales. But I've never seen any kind of reaction as this book this, is created in the lives this, of people. I, I'm telling you, <laughs> I, I know you've heard me say it many times because I've, I've had over 2,000 interviews, authors, over these 39 years. Oh. And, but I'm telling you, I think I'm a pretty good judge. If you have this book in your possession, you probably won't give it away, but you will give it to somebody and say, by the way, I'm gonna let you read this. Remember who gave it to you, because I need it back. <laughs> it is an amazing book. You, if you want to have an encouragement mm. and a motivator to talk to somebody that says God can't use me. Yeah, right. Share this. He can use you. I don't care what walk of life you're in. And remember that I've said this for many years because I Gene Edwards and Helen, I read through the Bible every year. This is this is the 30th wow. year. And Jesus Christ is the answer mm -hmm. to every need you may have. God bless. Bye-bye. <laughs>